This video, we're going to look at Alabama's offense versus Texas. Texas did a really great job defensively running to the football, tackling, played extremely hard. Alabama was just able to find a way to get the win. Okay, so we'll look at some of the things that Texas does and a few different concepts that Alabama used and some of the big plays through this game. We'll just roll straight the clips that I have at the beginning of the game all the way through. There are some that are very similar concepts, like this one right here is a concept they ran three or four times, and we'll look at all the different times they did it. Basically a little drive concept, and we'll just play it here to begin with. As you can see, they're in a two-back set right there. Both of them are releasing. He's going vertical, some kind of corner. He's a flat route somehow over here. Somebody's going to end up going there. He's going to dig. This running back comes out, and he runs a return route or an angle route right there back to the middle. As you see, there's the running back releasing there, creating that smash, just like you would on that drive concept. There's the under. He's going right there to the dig. He's releasing, and you see him work back in. Now, as you play it, you see quarterback, as soon as he catches it, Bryce Young, as soon as he catches it, his eyes go straight right there. A lot of times you'd look that direction to make sure that these guys are off, but he must have seen something that he liked as far as man-to-man -man or something right here where that mic just running that hard that direction. And you see there's the under. Could possibly take that right there. But you see that backer right here running extremely hard to it. There's the angle. I feel like the, the spacing on this all day was a little bit off. They were a little jumbled up. Like right here, I feel like he should probably press that thing a little bit deeper. Right here, Bryce, you can see he once he sees him go right there, he's going to work that dig. Throws it through the window. And there's the in route right there from the front of that stack. So, again, boom, he goes right there. He's under. He comes out back to the middle. Some sort of a smash over here. Looks like instead of starting over here, Joe Burrow did for LSU a few years back. His eyes go straight here. So it'd be one, two, three to the running back. And the running back was a big plus in the passing game all day. Especially Jameer Gibbs getting him out of, the, out of the backfield. Give him a chance to make plays in space. We'll see a few more clips right here of this same concept as we go through the game. And we'll see kind of how the spacing works out. I, I would rather that thing be a little bit more spacey. These guys are almost stacked on top of each other making that window pretty tight. Here's a look right here of Alabama running Mesh, getting him out to the flat zone, actually Willem. And they have Mesh coming right here from inside guy, outside guy here. Looks like he's going post. He's sitting right there. And as you play it, you can see Texas does a really good job. He's going right there trying to get this guy open on the Mesh. Some sort of a match. He's actually playing man over there to the single. And these guys are basically zoning off. They do a great job. I'm sure these guys have seen this play a thousand times in practice. So they do a great job of playing this. Obviously, Sarkeesian is probably running the same stuff over there. He's trying to get him open. And obviously, this is a third and seven. So Bryce knows he's trying to get to the sticks. Could put it on him, but he sees that there's this backer here in this space as well. Going to make the tackle, so he tries to make it work. But Texas right here with the three-man rush. Great rush here off the edge. Great effort. He's dipping, he's dripping. He's trying to get that pressure on him. Really nowhere to throw right here for Bryce. He starts working around, trying to work up in the pocket. Then he realizes that this guy's about to smoke him right there in the back. So right there he eats it, holds on to the football, so then they can punt it out. Uh, but right there you can see Texas does a really good job. They've seen this play a lot of different times, probably from Sark with that exact same look. And then obviously that rush hitting home right there with three man able to get him on the ground. Here's a look right here of Texas giving up a really big play early in the game. 3-3 game in the first quarter, 81 yard run. And all through the game they kept talking about how Alabama had a distinct rushing advantage over Texas. And I kept thinking in my head, well, there's only one play. They always had like 100, Texas had 40 or whatever, but it really just came with this one play, just basically because this guy kind of gets out of his gap right here. And as you see it, you got the fullback receiver out here, and they just run an outside zone over here. They base back side because they're going to read this cat right here. It is a, it's a quick screen RPO. He's going to block there, read there. If he would have slid in the box, he'll flip it out there real quick. But as you can see, as far as RPO, he slides out. So right there, Bryce Young gives it. He fakes it like he's throwing it that way just a little bit. But right here at the point of attack is where this really falls apart for Texas right here. Right here, this defensive end, for whatever reason, he sees that he's getting reached and he tries to scoop inside. And he ends up all the way in the A gap. And he just pins that. Now there's nobody left. Right here you've got the center. Does a great job reaching right here. But this guard, he gets outside shoulder. That, that even is tackled. He gets tripped up. And that guard is even able to get off on that linebacker. Just right there. Just gets just enough of him. Maybe he tackles him. Maybe he blocks him. I don't know. It's one of those things. Uh, but right there, he's able to take two for one right there with the right guard. Center's trying to get there. He falls down. All that stuff gets tripped up. But basically because they were able to take care of that guy and get up to on that linebacker. And this defensive end, instead of fighting against that pressure, 
working outside trying to turn this run back to everybody else, they're able to get that edge right there. Now you got speed running downhill and they leave the cornerback right here who's obviously going to be an outside gap fitter. He goes and gets the safety who's probably the better tackler. Leave that corner outside, see if he'll make the play. He steps up trying to turn it back in to his buddies, but he's not able to make a play right there. Beats him vertically, gets just enough right there on that safety, and now it's off to the races for a big play and a touchdown there for Alabama. And all it really comes back down to is gap integrity there at that DN. I don't know if they're trying to twist here. Is the first and 10 is the first play of this drive. Uh, but for whatever reason, this guy's trying to slide into that gap, and that cost him right here with a big play and a touchdown. Here's like the same drive type concept right here. Different formation, I've just got a tight end, single receiver over here. He ends up running a corner. He runs an out, so they get their smash right there. He runs the dig, he's running the under. He angles it right there. And on this one, you can really see, I think this gets jumbled up as far as the spacing. Quarterback catches it again, eyes go right here instead of looking over here. Could possibly glance over there and check, make sure we can't throw that out for a free first down, which they might've been able to do right here. But as you see, there's the under. This linebacker is chasing pretty hard. Here's the dig. I think he should probably angle out a little bit more so that he can not be stacked on top of him. As you see it played, these guys are basically stacked on top of each other, so I really don't like the spacing here. So I'd angle him just a bit so he can stay out of that window. But right there, linebacker's down. Don't like that. that running back has a chance to shake. Going back towards the middle on a third and six. Puts it on him. He fights forward. Gets the first down right there on a third and six for Alabama. Obviously, the spacing, I think, could be a little bit better on that. But you can see that concept and what they're trying to do. I think it's really interesting doing that at a two-by-two two with that stack look. And they obviously had some success with it in this game. This is a play that Alabama liked when they got to their third and long. This is third and 12. And right here, they end up running, basically, they're running basics right here, a bunch of square ends. He actually runs it short of the sticks. But right here, as you'll watch it, it's a four-man rush. And obviously, they're getting after it, trying to get to the quarterback. But these guys are giving lots of ground right there. Understand that they have 12 yards that they can give up, uh, but right there, he breaks in at about eight. Bryce does a good job, hey, take your completion, puts it on his body, easy catch, and he's able to make that first down on a third and 12. Right there being a little bit soft right there at that corner spot, should probably stay a little bit tighter. They don't just have that speed, especially right here, this is just a tight end, really no reason to play that far off. As a corner or safety or whoever this guy is right here, probably a little more athletic than that tight end. I know he's probably a, good, a really good ball player, but should be able to play a little bit tighter. But instead they play way off, easy completion right there for first down, and they'll come back to this play on another third and long. Here's a third and 17, a little bit different look right here from Alabama as far as their verticals. Motion him out, in and back out. He ends up running down the seam. He's going right there. We got a vertical outside, vertical over here. They're in a three front, they walked a the guy down, so basically they're gonna rush four. They do a great job. Really bad set here by the left tackle. He oversets this D end, so he just rips to that B gap, and he starts pressing that, trying to get into the quarterback's face, getting hands up. Same thing right here if you look at the other side. Here's the walk down linebacker. They're trying to slide to it. They actually have three guys. They're just not extremely strong right there. That thing is getting condensed back in the quarterback's face, which is not great right there as far as being comfortable to throw the football. Right here, you're looking at Texas. They actually roll their secondary down right here on a third and 17, so really getting to a one-high look. Press down here, so you might kind of hang there, but right here, since that safety's hanging there to the single, you're coming down right here to the next vertical, and that's really the throw right here. Obviously, getting this pressure in, the, in his face right there for Texas is what makes his throw be off. Right there, if you're looking at it, if you drill that ball right there to that seam, he has a chance to catch that thing before that safety. Uh, for whatever reason, he decides he wants to go more vertical there, as opposed to be ready for that ball right here in the seam, which is where I would teach the quarterback, hey, we want to drill that thing in between those linebackers before that safety can get there. Obviously, third and 17 is not the best situation to be in, but if you can get that completion with him running vertical before that safety, maybe he can make him miss, maybe he can get the first down. But instead, he tries to push that thing a little bit more vertical, and it would have been a lot harder throwing catch right there, that safety converging. Uh, but right there, really good job by Texas, making stuff happen quickly with that pass rush, getting into his face. Obviously, Bryce Young's not the tallest guy. He's not going to be able to see over everything. And right there, sped him up just a little bit, which obviously with him going back vertical right there and that ball being in that space, if there would have been just a little bit more time, maybe they get the completion right there. But a great pass rush there by the Texas D-line. Right here on third and nine, Allen tries to go back to the well again. they got their tight end out here running that square in. They're running an in. He's coming across here. And they've got basically a smash right over here. He's faking right there and he's leaking to the flats. 
Last time they threw it out here to the tight end, this guy played way off, and they were able to get a free completion, get a free first down. Whereas you can see, a lot more aggressive here at this corner spot, a lot tighter coverage here in the secondary as well. If you see AC Bryce Young's eyes, he catches it. It's a little bit of a fake. His eyes go over here looking for that space. They play a little bit tighter as he's stepping up into the pocket. See him to the flats. There's that square in that he threw last time for that first down. Now he's having to scramble around trying to make something happen. Obviously, the athlete is he gets outside the pocket. Great effort here by number 90. You can see D tackle. He already got into that pass rush. But right here, chasing the Heisman Trophy winner. Uh, he's running, trying to find, trying to make something happen. He knows that sideline is going to help him. Lays out, gets just enough of his leg, trips him up before the first down. If he wouldn't have got a piece of him, I'm thinking he's probably getting this first down. A great effort there by 90, because he's probably going to fall forward, get that first down, but instead comes up a yard short. Amazing play by the D tackle, running down the Heisman Trophy winner and keeping him from getting that first down on a pretty crit critical third and nine there for Texas defense. Again, right here in the fourth quarter, 935, on a big drive for Alabama, they're back to one of their favorite concepts right here. Smash, you got him running that dig under. He comes here, he shakes back to the middle. And obviously right here, a critical situation with the fourth and three. So right here, we can see what takes place. Ball gets snapped, quarterback's eyes, they go right there. So he's looking for that under as he's going right there. If he jumps it now, he's looking for that dig. He's staying a little tight. Now he's looking for that window on the dig. There's a, a lot of bodies here and a lot, uh, not much space. So right here, Bryce Young does a great job of putting it through the window, putting it on his body so it's an easy catch. Really accurate ball right there through a tight window. Obviously, like I, we've talked about before, I didn't think their spacing was great on this play right here. As he's coming across, I'd rather him go out. He needs to press this a little bit wider. Maybe they feel like they didn't have enough time. But they basically dictated and made everything stay in this little window right here. Made it tight for that window, but they're able to throw a catch right there. Fisher's in the way. Thank goodness he, he ducked down just enough. Able to get that completion on a fourth and three on the drive where Alabama goes down there and takes the lead. Here's a look right here at one of Alabama's favorite empty concepts right here. They run their slot fade down here. He's got an option to run out. Then here they run a bit of a toggle route. So this guy right here, he's gonna run vertical. He's got an option to go out or in, just kind of based on what kind of space there is. Once he gets to the second level, he ends up bending in. And right here, this guy's got the option still to run in, run out, all that stuff. So right here, as the ball is played, you can see he's getting to that second level. He's playing off. He bends into the window. With that guy working out, there's huge space right there in the middle. So boom, he breaks to the middle. And right there, Bryce Young pops it on him right there, gets down inside the red zone. Now, if you look at this toggle route from the guy behind, he steps up. He's looking for that space. Now he knows there's space outside. That corner backed up. This guy's kind of inside. This guy's got inside left outside backer does. So he starts working out. And as he works out, that obviously opens up that space a little bit more for that dig. And Bryce Young does a great job understanding where he's going. Puts it on his body. The other thing that's really underrated is just the accuracy right here. Bryce Young, it's not a, a far throw, but right there, he puts it exactly where you want it. Right there on his numbers. Easy catch on his body. Gives him a chance to make something happen after the catch. This play right here, I think it's another one. One of O'Brien's favorite plays and one of Tom Brady and Gronkowski's favorite plays. So they're an empty, basically run kind of a slot fade. Here's Gibbs who ends up catching this ball. But right here, again, slot fade over here. He's basically got an option right here. So I think this is Hoss Wide Juke. What a lot of people would call Hoss Wide Juke where he can go in, he can go out, he can do all that different stuff. He's just getting open. It's basically a GO right there. His quarterback catches it. His eyes go right here. And he goes in just a couple steps and then starts working out. Not really... A whole lot of space could put it on him right there especially being first and goal and see if he can turn to get into the end zone but he doesn't like it on that option route so right there he pumps it a little bit now it's bryce young being bryce young steps on the pocket starts working if you look here to the back side basically got a slot fade here here's gibbs he just kind of works off the ball he's hanging out right there once he starts scrambling you can see everybody's eyes are in the backfield his eyes are in the backfield he's stepping up gibbs he's that space right there starts working behind does a good job of working behind the guy so now he can't see him. And by the time he figures it out, he's already passed him. So if you're looking at this backer, once he goes behind him, boom, he, he loses sight of him. And now Bryce Young does an amazing job. I mean, this is the reason why this guy won a Heisman Trophy. He gets out of the pocket, he's looking around, finds his guy, flips his hips, gets this ball out as he's getting smoked. Hits him right in the chest right there for a touchdown. Uh, it's one of those things you can't really teach this. You got to be a man to, to be able to. Same plays earlier down here 
he runs that dig or that option and he's running where he can go in and out anything like that he's just looking for space slot fade over here trying to keep those guys in that area and right here you can see this linebacker is in the middle of the formation as opposed to over here last time so looks a little bit more like a man coverage or some kind of a blitz look uh, so right here he inside releases going to dig where they hit last time basically he's chasing right here so good job here by the receiver knowing that there's nobody in the flats he just rolls to it and bryce young gives it to him good job seeing the numbers seeing the spacing right there don't really like that side three on three but it's pretty tight that guy's way off looks like they're playing man there nobody can play the flats right there if he runs vertical now if he would set on the flats now obviously you got that option route right there possibly a hit on that dig uh, but right there they take the out Again, accurate ball right there. Make them come down and tackle. This is the beginning of that last drive. So first play that last drive, they're able to take this completion. Get out of bounds right there with a two minute drill. That's what you wanna do, you wanna get a completion. Obviously on the first play, get out of bounds. Save your timeout, save, save some time, and just get in a little bit of a rhythm right there with an easy throw and catch there to start off the two minute drill. Here's a look from Texas. Trying to bring six, obviously one of them, if, they, if the back releases, has to take him man. They're rolling down to a cover one, just manned up here, all the way across the board, one high, rolling back. If the back releases, somebody's got to take him. So right here, as it's played, trying to get a little bit of pressure. Second and two right here again, last drive of the game for the offense. He starts wide, he has the pill with him, puts his foot in the ground, and you're never going to win that matchup right there with the defensive end or outside linebacker trying to play Jameer Gibbs. Easy throw and catch there, playing cover one. Everybody's locked down, seeing no help right there on the running back, and now he's running in space, creating explosive plays there in the two-minute drill. Texas trying to be aggressive, bringing a six-man blitz, trying to get a sack so that then they can run some time off the clock, push him back, but right here, great call, great execution, good job getting out of his hand. The other thing that's great about this is the protection. They do a good job of understanding this guy right here is, is hot. They'll take care of the rest of these guys up front, and that's what they do, even with a little bit of a twist, a little bit of game being played right there. Easy throw and catch one-on-one -on -one with the running back and outside linebacker. All right, on this play right here, another blitz look here from Texas. They end up actually playing cover zero. You can see corner fire here. Saves having to go to top playing zero. He ends up blitzing, and this guy's having to play man there, man there, man there. He's going to go top right there. This guy right here, obviously, he's still responsible for the running back. So right here, as the running back releases, they're running the exact same play they just hit against that cover one with Gibbs going back down the middle for that explosive play. This time, Texas brings the corner. Corner's a free rusher. He's gone. We're hot right here, and we also have him taken off on the running back. So your hot route, which is the running back, is taken care of, and there's an extra blitzer. So we're not, we're not exactly doing a great job as far as the scheme. The defense actually won right here as far as the scheme. Now, you win with the scheme, now you gotta finish the play. This guy right here makes your scheme right. So right there, fights up through that, cornerback misses the play, everybody's gone, it's cover zero. He's having to chase Gibbs back that direction, and he made the only guy that was free in the defense that what happens. But again, really good call here from the Texas defense. They, they covered everybody down, nobody was open. This guy peeled, does a great job of peeling, there's the hot guy, and there's no option to get it out of your hand unless you see that corner blitz, get it out right now to your guy like they do later in the game. We'll see it. But uh, right here, steps through, shows why he's clutch and can probably win the Heisman again this year if he can get any help on the outside. Just want to show this play at the very end just for coaches and stuff. So right here, Alabama, they're actually running outside zone this direction, and there's 19 seconds left on the clock. You got one timeout. It's third down, so you basically have one more play. Now, I think Alabama's trying to run outside zone this direction, get the ball in the middle of the field, call a timeout whenever it gets down to about three seconds, and just kick it, game's over, so they don't have to kick off, they don't have to worry about all the other stuff. Uh, right here, as you can see, corner blitz, just like they had on the last play that we looked at. And right here, instead of just basically off of instincts, he's thinking, hey, I want to throw this out here, we can just score a touchdown if he makes this safety miss. See if he does a good job of rolling down, that will make him miss, but flips it out there, gets a completion, Tackle him, whether it's inbounds, out of bounds, really doesn't matter. He just needs to get him on the ground. Right there, pushes him out of bounds, stops the clock. Uh, so right here, just thinking as, as a game manager, I'd probably tell the quarterback, hey, I, I know what you saw. Any other situation, cool, flip that thing out there, make him tackle. But we really want to hand this outside zone, get to the middle of the field, make it easy for our kicker, and get that thing down so that it's down to 
two, three seconds, we can take that last time out, and then we can just be done as soon as we kick the game winner. We don't have to kick off. We don't have to stop them right there. There's a lot of crazy stuff happens in college football, really any level of football. So we just want to end the game right now and the ball off, get to the middle of the field, get down, kick the game winning field goal, get out of town with a win. That being said, awesome game from Alabama. Great game from Texas. Those guys play extremely well defensively. It's going to be interesting to watch both these teams throughout the year and see how they do.